Um, Parsons and Foreman at Aerojet uh, were seen as being somewhat disruptive in the organization. Aerojet's a strange organization during the war years. Uh, wartime meant people did a lot of different things quickly. Uh, we've got a new contract, we've got to get it done, done. That kind of thing. Uh, any way you can. Get some more people over here. Find out. Buy supplies. Get a lot of chaotic kind of situations. Um, Parsons and Foreman apparently were seen as being contributors uh, to the problem rather than solvers of the problem. And in about 1944, Aerojet found itself in a negative cash flow situation, using modern terms. And they went looking to find someone who could help them out. General Tire Corporation said, yeah, we don't think this is going to last as soon as the war over rockets is, the war is over, rockets are going to go away. But it'll be a nice ta tax write-off if we own, own your organization. And uh, so we're interested in buying it. But we want those two stockholders, Parsons and Foreman, out of the picture. And they tasked Andrew Haley to buy them out. Uh, Parsons and Foreman, uh, Haley came to them, gave them a good argument. When the war is over, rockets are going to fade. There isn't going to be the wartime need for JATO units anymore. They have no post-war application. The other things you guys have been doing won't be needed. Parsons and Foreman listened to that argument, and for the $250, $250 investment that they had made initially, each were given $50,000 about four years later. That's a pretty good return on your investment. They walked away from Aerojet, went off to do those other things that they were going to do. Parsons eventually goes, almost immediately goes to work uh, back for the powder company that he had worked for initially, and then goes to work for North American Aviation as a uh, motor designer, rocket motors there. And one of the things that happens that Parsons and Foreman didn't anticipate was, was the rise of the guided missile. Uh, so that a lot of the aircraft industry in Southern California got involved in uh, guided missile production. North American was not, uh, was one of those. He worked there for a while uh, and then uh, changed jobs again and went to work for um, Hughes Corporation. Similar kind of things, running a design lab uh, where he was thinking about and designing some, some uh, uh, rocket propellant uh, manufacturing facilities and at the same time was still somewhat concerned about what he was going to do and heard about the new state of Israel. Uh, found out that an organization called the American Technon uh, Society was recruiting people uh, to go to work in Israel and they were interested in the possibility of having someone who was experienced in rocket propellants come to work there. Uh, said to Parsons, uh, as part of your application process, why don't you design for us or show briefly to us what you would suggest we do for a rocket propellant uh, uh, facility where we would uh, create, uh, uh, through chemistry, the rocket propellants. Well, <laughs> one of the things that Parsons does as a part of this process is take some of his own paper home from uh, work some of the things he'd been working on, some of the studies he had completed, unfortunately this was classified material. Uh, he took it home and he took it to someone else who he wanted to make a transcript of portions of it and that person blew the whistle, said, you can't have this, I shouldn't see this, this is classified. Uh, the FBI steps in, Parsons is fired from his employment, they investigate Parsons for espionage, the investigation takes quite a while to play out Eventually, uh, it turns out that the Attorney General for the Los Angeles District determines that Parsons didn't intend nor really give any information over to a foreign agency, and besides, he wouldn't have given them anything that would have been too bad. Uh, so, he's out of work in, at Hughes, uh, and the other work that he gets involved with, he's got some other things on the side, he's been thinking of some new kinds of dynamite, supposedly. Uh, he goes back to work for another explosives company, and he also finds work building small pyrotechnic devices for the movie industry. So that between about 1945, 1950 or so, 
Uh, he's doing work in the aircraft industry, various and sundry small things. Never really quite so deeply associated with rocket work thereafter. But uh, he uh, goes on and is working for a powder company at the time of his death. 